and you know this this obvious pageantry and an event we've seen easily more than a dozen cameras used just in this procession today and again the idea that this required a technical rehearsal because it is many things and among the things it is is a televised event and the placement of a camera right here is obviously very deliberate and, and really symbolic as the procession continues. We tend to approach it from a fact-based, uh, this is what's happening. We might bring in some commentators who are familiar with her legacy, but in Britain it's 24-7. They call it rolling coverage. And what is so interesting is people over the years that you've seen occasionally on television here, these quote unquote royal commentators. Uh, I'm on some email chains and they're, they're literally book solid. Mm. And you, normally when it would be what I would best describe as gossipy reports about what's happening with Meghan Markle or something like that, all that has been pushed to the side. Uh, and there's just so many reminiscences and uh, most of them very fondly uh, of the Queen. And the knowledge that some of those experts have is just, it's its really incredible. It's a career. I, it is a career. Well, it, it is a career. Not only yeah. that, it, it, it's the type of thing, in fact, I was on a program the other day and there were some royal photographers who were showing extraordinary pictures from the 1970s. Oh. It's like, oh, wow. and it, but, but people's singular encounters with the Queen are things that they never forget. Right. I have um, a book on the Queen, and it, it literally is the size of a dictionary. Oh, I mean, because wow. it's that, so that's how full her life was, and how much history there is, and how much there is to say. And uh, so again, these, these experts, I can, I can only imagine how fascinating it is to uh, be hearing from them, especially in the UK, who have dedicated their lives to uh, that knowledge. And then also hearing about how King Charles III is expected to rule, uh, if you will, in his role in the monarchy. And, uh, you know, did, it, will he be, you know, much like his mother, who was very reserved and tried to stay out of most political matters yes. and, and felt it was her job to be a quiet and steady hand, it seemed, yes. versus someone who might be more politically active. Was it her, um, I heard Sam, it's like never explain and never complain. Right, was exactly her, right. This, this, whole, this whole sort of stiff upper, li yes, upper lip. Yes, yes. Uh, and then this behind the scenes uh, Which has served her humor. very well. Yes, I mean, absolutely. it really has. It's like, oh, I should, I should take a lesson. <laughs> never complain. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was the phrase again? Uh, never complain and never explain. Gotcha. Yeah. Because if you're explaining, then, well, then you stepped in. Well, then you might get yourself into more trouble. Yeah. Exactly. Keep, keep calm and carry on. Exactly. Which is, of course, very, it's the very British way of being, isn't it? Exactly, yes. 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 And then I think if you you do simple mathematics, Prince Charles, or excuse me, I apologize, King Charles perhaps could expect a 20, 25 year reign, but it would never, ever. Oh, right. uh, can't compare. Right. So based on our timing, which has been on their timing, which is impeccable, they, they said they were gonna begin at, at 622, and they're they're kind. I would imagine they're getting close as we near the top of the hour, which in it, when they're supposed to be at Westminster Hall, as we bring back in Lauren Lister right now, I imagine they're getting closer and closer to that that final uh, destination for today's procession. And Lauren Lister, can you hear s some of it more now, maybe? Chris, I'm, I. I think I can hear some of it. It's hard to tell. We've heard the gun salutes. We've heard Big Ben. We believe at any moment we will begin to hear them sooner because at the top of the hour is when they are supposed to arrive here at Westminster Hall, and they have been right on time. I mean, in lockstep. 2.22, uh, our time is when this was supposed to begin, and that is when it did. So any moment, they should be getting very close to where we are. It is just about a mile from Buckingham Palace, where we are at Westminster Hall, where the Queen's Coffin is uh, going to be brought in and put on a catafalque as, it, as it's called and that's where she'll lie in state but man this scene on the streets of London is just you know such a sight there's Big Ben again um, you see the crowds you see the royal family and lockstep behind the coffin 
Uh, you could take a look in the crowds, uh, just people solemnly watching. I mean, this is their first opportunity they've had to see the uh, British monarch that served this country for so long, 70 years, see that coffin in person exposed. Last night it was driven through the streets of, of London from the airport, and you can see the coffin through the hearse. But this is now on an, a, a gun carriage, which is what it's called. It's open. So the coffin is there on display with that royal flag, with the crown on top, and then with all of this regalia surrounding it. The, this is the first time we've seen this many members of the royal family with the coffin. The, the uh, Queen's children uh, kept vigil around the coffin in Scotland at St. Giles Cathedral, but now you have the children, you have the grandchildren on the streets just in this period of grief, you know, so publicly now uh, seen with that coffin and, and marching so um, solemnly and, you know, in such a dignified expression here. It's, I can hear them getting closer. Uh, there are so many people taking part in this par parade, as many as a thousand members of the armed forces. Air traffic has been halted uh, during this period. So basically a total of about 40 minutes, 38 minutes that this is going on. Uh, walking, walking about a mile uh, through the streets of London. We have seen people gathered outside of Buckingham Palace for days now, but this time they are kind of seeing Queen Elizabeth depart for the very last time after staying there overnight. Chris and Megan. And, and Lauren, you know, you've been there for days now. You know, you're you're experiencing kind of the mood, what things feel like, you know, 24 hours a day. Do you get the sense even when this is over and folks are enjoying their dinner tonight and that sort of thing, do, can you feel the somberness kind of throughout the entire day in London? Well, you know what? Well, you know what? That's a, that's a great question, Megan. You know, it's interesting. So um, when I was out at Windsor Castle, which is one of the places where there's been a public outpouring of grief and condolences, it's one of the royal residences. It's in Windsor. It's somewhere where the Queen spent a lot of time, we're told, and it's about an hour outside of London. Some of the people said, you know, it wasn't a sad, somber feeling there. It was respectful. It was thoughtful. It was... Uh, you know, one of reverence, but not necessarily um, terribly, you know, grief stricken. Yes, I've seen people, ears, yes, people have been moved, but I thought that one man summed it up as respectful and thoughtful, and I thought that that was kind of an appropriate uh, way to put it. But absolutely, people are also very struck with emotion at times. You know, my cab driver one night told me his wife cried for hours after getting the news. Some people telling me that even though they knew this was coming and it didn't come as a shock at 96 years old, that they were surprised at how sad they felt, remarking on how it was the only monarch they'd ever known and it really gave a sense of constancy that was in some of the notes too that we saw at uh, at Windsor Castle also to some light-hearted notes you know a lot of the of the notes from kids that I've seen in these tributes have pictures of corgis you know they drew they draw pictures of corgis with the queen or even the queen with Paddington Bear because of two of the lighter things that she was associated with you know corgis were the dog breed that she had throughout her life so many of we heard at what I believe was a cannon salute so there are so many different aspects of this procession that we just heard and we can hear them getting closer we can hear uh, the the bands that are playing the drums beating they are within earshot of where we are